Somewhere in the woods, a woman lies on the ground, her appearance not so decent after being mishandled and assaulted by an orc. Another orc complains for not being invited to the deed, but the oppressor says that he was just lucky as she was roaming in the forest all alone. Now the question arise as to what to do with her now. One of them suggests to dispose of her because they are on a mission and cannot move from their posts. The other says to let him have his fun with her as well if they are going to get rid of her. He even says that he wants to have a wife of his own someday, but for that to happen, he must be promoted to a chieftain at least. However, that is not possible because they are assigned on this desolate place. The two of them are still talking when an arrow struck the head of one of them. This makes them alert and they find a man in armor and an elf in the proximity. The newcomers hey. seem to come from the south, but that area is protected by lizard men, so how is this possible? The man in armor has no intention of answering his questions. The other orc does not pay any mind to the intruders and wants to reach the girl on the ground. Fortunately, the elf stops him by shooting on his hand. The orc curses her but still wants to proceed the action from before. The man in armor slashes his head to put an end to his debauched intentions. The man in armor and the elf scan the area to ensure that those two were the only ones there. The two of them are disgusted that the orcs acted like that even when fleeing as they only follow their wild instincts. The man in armor asks if this would come to an end. The elf replies that it would come to an end this time for sure. Long ago, there was a great war. It was a war that lasted a great deal of time. And by the end of it, the entire continent of Estonia was scared with battlefields. People have long forgotten what triggered the war that has waged for the last 50 years. But for the 12 races, the war is only suffering. However, all things must come to an end and this would also be the fate of this everlasting war. When the news reached the orcs, they all rushed to the town square to inquire and hear from their king. The king of the orcs, Nemesis announces that the war is over. They have decided to surrender and to accept the treaty with the alliances of four races. He will tell them about the conditions of their surrender later. With the death of the demon king Gedegus, the war came to a sudden end. The union of seven races, who had lost their main fighting force, was forced to accept their defeat by signing the treaty that called for their unconditional surrender. However, the orc forces could not admit their defeat, claiming that they can still fight. The main reason of their fighting spirit was to get women. There was no future of orcs without women after all. However, their objection did not mean anything, as the lives had been lost and the war was over. Amidst the corpses, an orc stood straight, accepting the fact that they had lost. Three years later, the same orc sat in a bar. The other regarded him as the hero. It is a title bestowed to the strongest orc. The man that has earned the title of hero can attain whatever he wants by his hand. Property, weapons, foods, authority, and the respect of every orc. One could say that it is everything that an orc could ever dream of. The other orcs respected him as well as envious of him. They wanted to ask him about his fights and journey, but are too scared to disturb him while he is enjoying a drink. They keep talking hmm. about it among themselves and wonder what kind of women he likes. Could it be that he likes the human women or would he be too tired of them due to his caliber? He does not even visit the mating room. So there is a high possibility that he is into the legendary Dragonute. No matter what others say about him, but, in truth he is in distress. As the one that has everything within his grasp, there is still something he cannot reach no matter how much he wishes for it. The hero moves from his position and walks towards the door, crossing the orcs that were talking about him. The two of them get too scared in respect and apologizes, but he pays them no mind. The orcs are in awe and want to be like him. But they know that there is no way they can be like him. However, they are really curious to find the type of women he is into. Hmm. The truth is, there are none. Orcs hero, Bash, 28 years old and a virgin. Bash was born during the midst of the long war. A green orc born from a human that had been captured and assaulted. At age of 10, he stood at the battlefield he faced many dangers, but he lived and in doing so, realized his great achievements five years after that none could stand beside him and he earned his place as the strongest warrior. He's a natural-born warrior. No matter how bad the situation, he will rush into the field and bring victory to the army and after bringing about victory, he would run to the next field of battle. Bash has always believed that he has faithfully followed his instincts as an orc. That itself is not wrong. But it's not true either. He came to realize that that normally the victors bring home the women and assault them as spoils of war. 
in fact, that there is no virgin left among any of the soldiers. But it's too late now. During the war they could just take a woman from the enemy and graduate from their virginity right away. But it is not possible now. Because of the peace treaty the law now dictates the requirement of consent between members of another race when engaging in sexual acts. However, he can still lose his virginity if he goes to the mating room. But reputation and prestige of the hero would draw all manner of spectators. But there's no way that a virgin could live up to the prowess of his name and if the fact that the hero of the orcs is a virgin were to spread the honor of his tribe would be trampled into the dust. That's why he had decided that he must keep the secret of his virginity from everyone else. But he wants to get rid of his virginity. A strong warrior has a duty to leave an offspring. And as the orcs hero, he wants to push a woman down and leave the seed of his inside her right away. But he does not want to disappoint the younger generation. As the unease hung over his head, Bash reached 28 years of age. No matter how hard an org trains himself, if he reaches the age of 30 and remains a virgin, a mark will appear on his forehead. And he will become an orc mage. When an orc mage appears, they are trained in seclusion to serve their country, normally joining the ranks of the orc mages would be one of honor and praise. But for a warrior such as Bash, there is no greater shame. For what claim to victory can be made by a man who has not partaken in the spoils of war? He considers himself as a walking disgrace, so he makes up his mind on this matter. He gets ready and goes to see the king. The king can tell from the looks in his eyes that Bash has made his mind. Bash wants to explain, but the king tells him that he does not need to explain himself at all for he understands. He has heard rumors of Bash never visiting the mating room, so he knows that Ba is going on a journey to search his wife. Hearing that, Bash speculate that the king already knows of the matter of him being a virgin as well as the fact that he wants his first partner to be a virgin as well and making the woman her wife. The king realized everything. Bash requests the king to not stop him. The king has no intention of stopping him and he ensures that he would not tell this matter to anything. Bash finds the king kind and thoughtful for not saying anything to someone as pathetic as him and giving him a chance to regain his owner. Or King Nemesis, he surely is a man of caliber, fit to be called the king. Bash decides to pledge his loyalty to this great man until his death. When he leaves, the king's assistant comes and asks where Bash is headed to looking like that. The orc king simply says that their hero is going on a trial to prove that he truly is a hero. As a tradition, the orc hero should have a wife. But right now, even as a king, he does not have the power to bestow him a wife. And there is no precedent story of an orc acquiring a woman other way than assaulting her. Right now, the war has ended, and there is the treaty. Even though he can just live peacefully in this village, he has gone on a journey. To think that he is trying to uphold the pride of the orcs, even though they have lost the war. He is truly a hero. After the Great War had come to an end, in this era of peace, a soldier sets foot on a journey. Orc's strongest man, the hero Bash has gone out to a journey to meet his wife. If one wishes to breed, you must first do it. This is one of the most popular sayings in the world. Human beings are very fertile and very easy to conceive. Though there are individual differences, their bodies are strong and their appearance is not bad. For orcs, they were a very good breeding stock. Bash followed this maxim without hesitation. In the midst of the orc country, a fort that he and his countrymen had defended until the end of the war. And beyond that, the human city lies. He misses it because he heard that the fort had already been demolished. He mm. notices that there is a faint smell of blood. If there's a beast near here, he can get some food. So he decides to rush there to check. What he witnesses is a group of bugbears attacking some humans. There are two women being surrounded by the bears. The bears are about to attack them and Ba grows so loud that all the attention is diverted towards him. By instinct, the ears know that Bash is not someone to be messed with, so they leave the vicinity. Bash notices that the ones being attacked were a pair of women. By most orc standards, these women were not very pretty. But in all his years on the battlefield, Bash had never seen a woman up close until now. So he asks very politely if they would like to sire his offspring. Now do not get him wrong, in orc tradition, this is considered a proposal. But the women are scared out of their wits and thinking that they are going to be assaulted, they flee. Bash has no idea what he has done wrong as he stands there, watching them go. Bash hears a sound coming from one of the boxes of the broken carriage, so he picks it up to find Zell, a fairy trapped in a glass jar. Bash releases the Zell that keeps calling him master. She blabbers too much about how grateful she is. 
She finally asks how he knew that the fairies have been attacked. Vash tells her that it was just a coincidence that he saved her. Zell notices the broken carriage and thinks that it was actually Bash who attacked humans and had rebelled from the treaty. Bash explains that it was not him but the bug bears that attacked the carriage. However, Zell is not happy to hear that because Bash has been standing near the carriage and anyone to pass by would think that it was him to do it. As if her words became true, they notice someone approaching. Zell asks if they are going to fight but Bash decides to withdraw as it is not a good idea when he is trying to find a wife. On the way, he asks who Zell was captured. She tells him that she has an adventurous heart, so he was looking for something she had not seen before. Bash does not need to know what happened after that, so he stops her. Bash understood that she probably left the country out of boredom and got caught while playing around. Her curious nature also hmm. piques interest in Bash. She knows that he was declared the hero and must have gained respect from all other orcs. She thought that now he could live a happy life without any problems. She wonders if someone got jealous of him and tricked him. Bash tells her that it is not the case but does not say anything further. <sighs> Zell rants that he does not want to tell her even though she was saved by him and plans to stay with him for the rest of the life. She wants him to understand that she would be able to help him with her caring and sensitive nature. Bash thinks that Zell seems very good at gathering information and is familiar with the lifestyles of many different species. He is sure that she will be able to help him in his task ahead. So he comes clean and tells her that he is looking for a wife. Fortunately, hmm. Zell seems to understand that a wife is a very special thing for an orc. If he is a hero, it is not surprising for him to have a wife. But with the state of affairs in orc lands, it is nearly impossible to find a satisfactory wife. In its crux, she understands that Bash is looking for a wife. She <laughs> thinks that she would run office for that if she was not a fairy but she can still take care of it for him. Not many women want to be an orc's wife nowadays, but she is sure that she can find 10 or 20 wives in no time at all. Zell seems like she knows this matter well, so Bash leaves it up to her. They decide to head towards the city because no beautiful women would be in those woods. They arrive at the fortified city Cresel. Orcs and humans fought numerous times for occupancy this city. So it is no wonder that everyone is wary of Bash. Still, Zell did not think it would take three hours just to enter the city. However, Bash thinks that all human settlements are like that. Zell is angry at the gatekeeper for treating Bash with disrespect. Well, they entered the city at last, oh, it is now time to access the situation. Bash notices that there are a lot of women here and he can choose freely. Fortunately, Zell tells him that things do not work like this. He needs to look at the left hand fingers of the humans first. A ring on the hand of a woman indicates that she is already married. But the problem is that most of them have a ring on their finger. Zell tells him that humans in general have this one man, one woman couple rule going on, so they need to look for ones that do not have that ring on their finger. The women look too scared of him right now so they go to an inn without much of a success. Zell figured the prejudice against orcs would still strongly remain. Men they saw in the city think Bash will just discriminately slaughter them, and the women think he will discriminately assault and knock them up. They discuss that it is not entirely untrue. It is how it was in the war. Wartime orcs is a fresh memory for the humans. Bash did not think they will be so wary as to run away when he call out to them, though. This caution, it is the same with that time before he met Zell. <sighs> Zell asks him how he approached them and Bash tells her honestly how he asked them to sire his children. Zell grabs her forehead after hearing that and tells him that for humans, the act of conceiving is an important ritual with religious nuance. Things like marriage and bearing <gasps> children is something they only do with someone they love. There is no way they will bear the children of some stranger they just met. That is why in order to take a human woman to wife, he need to make her fall in love with him. But Bash does not know how to do it. That is where Zell comes in. Despite her appearance, she is pretty knowledgeable on humans. Even Bash finds her reliable. He must have good fortune to be able to meet her at the very start of his journey. Lesson number one is to look neat. Being dirty and smelly is a big turn off. After all, human females love cleanliness. Lesson number two is to smell nice. Zell tells him to put on the liquid after the bath that he uses before fighting beastmen. That is useful for evading beastmen scouting squads, but it stinks. And orcs don't really like sweet smells and Bash is among them. However, Bash tells her that it is not a smell he likes, but he does not particularly hate it either. After all, ones who do not put it on because they do not like the smell all die in the hands of beastmen they fight against. 
After hearing that, Zell decides to lend him a scent of her own. It is a top-notch one that not only prevents you from getting jumped on by beastmen, but also liked by humans. Now that the lessons are done, Zell instructs the innkeeper to prepare a bath for Bash. According to Zell, if he keeps these principles in mind, he should be able to score at least one girl. Bash remembers everything and even revises those to ensure Zell. Suddenly, he takes up his sword and poses a defending stance. Even Zell is surprised by his actions and asks if they are being attacked. Bash explains that they have been completely surrounded by the silent magic. By the number of people and their presence, he presumes that these are the same people as the ones they heard at the horse carriage. It is a high possibility that they have been followed. Even Bash did not notice their presence until now. Zell is worried about the next course of actions because it would not be easy to fight with these many numbers. However, Bash decides to solve the matter by talking instead. The most they can do is blame him for the carriage incident and chase him out of the city. Even so, the fact that they chased them all the way here means that they knew Bash was present near the carriage. Soon, a group of soldiers barge in the room in order to stand down. Bash remained calm and tells them to state their business. A soldier comes forward, takes off her helmet and states that they have been reported of a horse carriage being attacked by an orc and blames Bash for it. Bash is captivated by the woman's beauty and realizes that she is several times more beautiful than the women he saw earlier. He wishes to make the woman his wife and have at least three kids with her. He believes that it's suitable for a hero to have a beautiful female knight as a wife which will let him protect the orc's pride. His thoughts are interrupted by the woman asking for his answer. Bash thinks he can't ask her to be his wife all of a sudden as he needs to inspect her left hand first, but he can't see it because of the gloves. The woman's patience grows thin and she shouts at him to answer her. Bash apologizes and says that he was near the carriage but wasn't the one who attacked it and when he called out to them, they ran away. The woman doesn't believe him at which he again says that when he arrived there, the carriage was already being attacked by the bugbears and all he did was scare them off. The woman asks for proof. Bash remembers his lesson to always behave in a dignified manner and swears on the name of the great orc king Nemesis that he did not do it. This confuses the woman and the man with her. Bash thinks he's done it as swearing on the great orc king's name means that if he lies, he will face death and this declaration can only be used by great lord class warriors or above and for an orc there's no declaration as manly as that. The woman and man think that Bash is just trying to scare them by shouting that name. He woman says that the victims reported that an orc approached them to impregnate them. Bash says that engaging in naughty acts with another race without permission is prohibited in the name of the orc king, so he asked for their consent. <gasps> the woman shouts that Bash has no chance of getting consent. Bash says that you won't know without trying, and he's now learned that he won't get consent if he proposes out of the blue. The woman wonders what's wrong with Bash as orcs usually assault women as soon as they see them and even interrogating the orcs make them so angry that they start to attack. The woman accuses Bash of stealing something from there. Bash admits that he took something. The woman announces that she will now put him under arrest for stealing but Zell interrupts and shouts that she had been caught by the humans and was being trafficked which should be illegal according to the agreement between humans and the fairies and points out that it's strange that he's being arrested for stealing when he helped a fairy escape from being smuggled. This confuses a woman who tells them to come with her. Bash agrees but Zell asks him if it's fine as they were looking down at him. Bash thinks that the female knight in front of him is of his taste but he's still not sure if he should marry her or not as she didn't scream or run away when she saw her but instead asked him to follow her. He figures he'll have more chances to talk with her if he follows her, but if he refuses and rampages around the town, then he won't have any more chances to see her again, so he has no reason to refuse. The handcuffs are put on Bash, and he is taken away meanwhile, Bash plans to use this opportunity to make the woman his wife. A man reports that the suspect for the assault incident on the highway was an orc and he's been captured. The superior had ordered to go for the kill if it was a stray orc but the man reports that it may not be a stray orc based on the way he was dressed and talked. The superior says to let the orc go but the man reports that Judith believes that the orc is still suspicious. The superior gets frustrated with Judith and worries about who's going to take responsibility if this turns into a war with the orcs. The superior asks the man for his opinion. The man replies that the orc's story is suspicious as he didn't say the reason for his journey and has a fairy with him and he acted calmly despite being surrounded, so he thinks that the orc may be a spy. 
The superior Houston begins laughing. The man suggests that the orc got caught on purpose to steal information from the inside. Houston says that there's no way an orc could pull that off and the only one who could be the spy is the fairy. Houston thinks that if this happened in the middle of a war and found an orc with a fairy, he would begin preparing some kind of strategy. Houston is curious about the fairy so decides to go and see how the interrogation is going. While going the man is very relaxed as he feels that it will be safe to have Houston, the pig killer with him, but Houston dismisses his remark. Houston started his life as a commander by saying words like there's no one better in commanding. Ten years ago, Houston was a commander who commanded the retreat force after they were worn out, five years after that he became the new general after the old one died. After that Houston learned more about the orcs than anyone else. His vast knowledge about orc behavior allowed him to kill more orcs than anyone else which got him the nickname the pig killer. As they get close to the interrogation room, they can hear Judith interrogating. Houston thinks that Judith is pretty good despite being just a recruit but thinks that she won't be able to get a clear answer. Suddenly, he hears the orc saying that his journey is a personal journey to find something and he went through the forest as it was a fast route and he came there to find something and the fairy is his old friend who decided to help him. Houston realizes that the orc isn't a stray but a warrior and wonders why an experienced warrior is going out of the country to search for something. Suddenly, Houston realizes that he's heard the voice before and refuses to go in. He gets a bad feeling but thinks that he won't lose his life so changes his mind and heads in. He tells Judith to not overdo it but gets absolutely shocked as he recognizes the orc and remembers all the different titles Bash holds such as the orc hero and dragon beheader. He wonders why Bash and Zell are both there and asks Judith what she's doing. Judith explains that during her investigation she got a report of a suspicious orc so arrested him. Houston thinks that Bash got arrested by mistake because if he really was the attacker then he wouldn't have left any evidence and if he really was guilty then he can escape by destroying everything in his path as handling even a hundred men should be an easy task for him. Judith continues interrogating Bash to find out the reason for his journey but a scared Houston tells her to stop. Bash calmly says that he has nothing to say which makes Houston wonder why Bash isn't angry. Houston realizes that Bash isn't angry because of the citrus scent coming from the cell as orcs are omnivorous and like fruits. Houston tells Judith to let go of Bash and come out. This request confuses Judith and she blurts out his name and title. Houston <laughs> panics at this but Judith doesn't understand and doubles downs on insulting Bash. Houston shouts at her to shut up and come out. Houston bows respectfully and apologizes to Bash for Judith's behavior and explains the whole situation to him. Bash introduces himself and asks Houston if he knows him. Houston had seen Bash several times during the war. Bash asks Houston if he's a human warrior which Houston admits. Bash exclaims that he's feeling nostalgic and asks Houston if he's doing well. Houston tries to calm himself down and admits that he was negligent as a supervisor and asks for forgiveness. Bash isn't angry. Houston thinks that considering how Judith treated him Bash must be really kind-hearted but he still doesn't want to push his luck. Judith again asks to be allowed to ask some questions which makes Houston angry. After listening to everything Houston realizes that the arrest was made by accident as no one died in the attack. Houston asks Bash if the Orc King knows about what he's searching. Bash confirms it. Houston wonders if the Orc King Nemesis gave the order to Bash to find something or investigate someone. Houston tells Bash that it will be a problem if he doesn't follow the rules of the country but Bash is dealing with a personal matter so he doesn't plan to create any problems. Houston thinks it over and realizes that the detail of Bash's mission is a problem. Houston orders for Bash's handcuffs to be removed and apologizes to Bash for taking his time. Houston plans to quickly send Bash off and report the incident to the capital and tells him to not forget anything. Houston sees Bash looking at Judith and wonders why he's doing that and realizing that she investigated the incident asks Bash if there is any connection between his search and the assault on the highway. Bash replies that there probably is a connection. Houston asks Bash to let Judith go with him as she's responsible for finding the culprit. Judith <gasps> begins to argue at this but Bash assures her that he won't do anything unsavory to her. Judith still isn't convinced and thinks says that orcs are evil and Bash will definitely show his true colors when they get alone. Houston gets angry and tells her that Bash is different from straight orcs as he's the orc hero Bash but Judith has no idea who that is which makes Houston mad. 
Houston tells her that Bash is a very special orc, and normally she wouldn't be allowed to even talk to him due to his status, and if she angers him, then she's as good as dead, and if this incident incites a war with the orcs, then she would be put under the guillotine. Hey. Bash orders Houston to let go of Judith which scares him. Bash asks Houston if he doesn't have any shame for ordering around a woman. Houston realizes that Bash has a kind heart and is controlling his strength for the sake of his race and considers him an amazing person and thinks that Bash sees him as a person who can only boss someone around but he doesn't want to be seen like that in Bash's eyes and says that he too will go out to investigate the forest. The orcs discuss about the kind of woman they would like to marry. They want a strong-willed human woman as she will be the bride of the great war chief. The current wife of the chief still hasn't given birth to three children despite everything that's been done to her. Suddenly, they spot five knights accompanied by thirty infantry and rush to attack them. In the present Bash gets greeted good morning by Zell who jokingly calls him her husband. Zell realizes that Bash has been thinking about being with Judith. Zell asks Bash if Judith really is that good and gets irritated as Judith is being cheeky despite only being a recruit. Bash replies that it's because he likes strong-willed women, just like the rest of the orcs, and tells her to not worry. <laughs> Zell announces that she's collected enough of her fairy scale powder and thanks him for his help but wants him to use it in a place she hasn't seen him use before. She explains that fairy scales are like healing medicines and the fairies don't want others to have them as they are the same as fairy excrements. The powder has saved Bash's life on numerous occasions at which Zell tells him to put on his clothes. Suddenly Judith barges into the room saying that Houston told her to show Bash around but upon seeing him naked, she tells him to wear clothes as she waits outside angrily. Zell and Bash get confused at why she's so angry and feel like there's something wrong between yesterday's and that day's situation and feel that humans are difficult to understand. Bash quickly dresses up as they don't want to keep Judith waiting. Later, they reach the highway road of West Forest Crassel. Houston explains that the road is used to travel between Crassel and the Orc country or the Elven country, but few people use it as there are other safer routes. For a long time, wagons would rarely be attacked by demons, but recently it's been happening more and more so hunters were told about the demons which caused the bugbears to be eliminated, but still the attacks didn't stop so Houston had ordered Judith to investigate and she had found that the number of demon beasts near the highway was small but traces of demon beasts were found all over the place. Hmm. Zell asks if it's suspicious. They approach a merchant's carriage that was attacked and had its cargo stolen little by little so nobody would notice so it appears that someone is pretending to be a bugbear and is attacking the wagons but based on eyewitness testimonies and evidence gathered the only logical culprit would be a bugbear but Judith was in a hurry to close the case so mistook Bash as the culprit. Houston asks Bash for his opinion. Bash replies that it was a bugbear attack but Judith isn't impressed by him and talks him down. Bash thinks that he's not good at things like this but needs to show his good side to her. Bash presents his logic to Judith but she doesn't get it which frustrates him. Judith presents her logic of why the attack was done by human robbers and calls orcs stupid. Zell supports <sighs> Bash and agrees that it was a bugbear attack. They decide to track the attacker down but Judith is still confused. Zell makes it clear that they will search for the attacking bugbear. Judith points out that bugbears are cunning and cleverly erase their tracks, so not even the best hunters can track them down. Zell says that fairies don't do things like that, but Bash will do it as bugbears are demon beasts who are abundant in orc territory, so orcs are the best in tracking bugbears as they have been doing it for hundreds of years. Later while tracking Houston compliments Bash's sense of smell, but Bash doesn't consider it a big deal as they are easier to fool. Houston gives a nervous laugh as he previously exploited the orc's inability to distinguish between similar smells to lure and then eliminate them. Houston changes the topic by pointing out that they are close to the bugbear den. The other soldiers wonder why Houston is acting so weird and think that Houston befriended an orc and they think that the orc is nice and special. Suddenly Judith sees Bash looking at her and smirking. This makes her think that Bash is mocking her and thinking that she isn't even worth fighting but Bash didn't actually mean that. In reality he was practicing his lessons of smoldering gaze and enigmatic smile to impress her. They stop as they are almost at their destination when suddenly they hear a loud roar. Houston orders Judith to silence them. Judith touches everyone to make them quiet but Bash refuses as her hands are too cold but she still goes on with her work. Bash had never felt such a soft touch 
which makes him embrace her right then and there, and he remembers the time his battalion commander grabbed a woman during the war and made her go crazy. He thinks that doing something like that nowadays wouldn't be right. Bash tries to not snort despite getting excited as human women don't like it. They decide to first scout the area for which Zell volunteers and promises to be back before sunrise. They decide to wait till Zell returns. Bash knew that Zell almost always manages to find the enemy and there's a 50-50 chance that the enemy would capture her and as expected Zell didn't return. Zell gets captured and Bash points out that the cave is man-made and it appears that someone is controlling the bugbears, a beast tamer. Judith wishes to go in immediately to save Zell, but Houston wants to wait until night as they don't know the layout of the hideout nor the number of enemies and going in unprepared will get them all killed and asks Bash if it's fine. Bash agrees but Judith talks down to him for waiting despite his friend being captured and points out that orcs are supposed to be brave warriors that fight against all odds. Bash hmm. agrees with her but adds that orc warriors follow orders of their commanders. Houston remembers that orcs have a law that when staying in another clan's village, they are to follow the orders of the clan leader and thinks that Bash assumes that Houston is the clan leader. Bash adds that Zell will be fine. Judith asks Houston to give the order to lead the soldiers and kill everyone in the cave, but Houston replies that it's said that fairies don't die and asks Bash if it's correct. Bash explains that Zell survived the war and that all fairies can produce fairy dust, but people believe that killing them makes you cursed and even fairies can die, but Zell has survived despite being captured numerous times. Houston understands that Zell is a booby-trapped bait and hopes for the best. Houston orders everyone to remain on standby and keep an eye on the cave and then attack when everyone is asleep. Judith is still adamant to go in immediately but Houston wishes to make it perfect as they don't have time to go back and call for backup, so they will strike at night. He declines <gasps> Judith's request to attack and orders everyone on standby, which makes her distressed. Judith complains about the commander not listening to her to the soldiers. Houston thinks that even though he took command halfway, he must get all his men back safely and solve the case. He decides to put one of them on lookout duty while everyone else gets some sleep and asks Bash if it's fine. Bash agrees to follow his orders. Houston puts Jet on lookout duty and tells him to give a wake up in case something happens. The soldiers wake Judith up and ask to go and rescue Zell themselves. Judith points out that it will be disobeying orders, but they have notices Houston acting weirdly after meeting Bash, and they too wish to save Zell quickly, so they all decide to head in. Meanwhile, inside the caves, Zell tries to cook up a story to her captors to get them to let her go. The captors don't wish to kill her as they don't want to be cursed. Zell asks them to untie her so she can shower them all with her dust, but they don't untie her as they realize her tricks. She gets noisy trying to trick them into untying her. The noise attracts their boss. Zell sees the chief and gets his attention. The chief also recognizes her as Bash's friend and asks her what she is doing there. Zell remembers seeing him before but can't remember where. Zell hmm. cooks up a fake story about being bored and traveling around the world to get the chief to untie her and it works. One of the men is worried about Zell being a loudmouth, at which the chief grabs her and tells her to keep all of this a secret. Zell agrees to keep it a secret thinking that if she had been a loudmouth then Bash already would have died over a thousand times. The chief orders his men to free her after which Zell thanks him. Zell asks the chief what he's doing there and he explains that Nemesis wants to be friends with humans but the chief doesn't want that and went his own separate way on which he found these humans and they banded together. Zell asks them if they kill everyone, they see like a destroyer army. The chief admits that it's what they want to do but they can't at the moment. The chief explains that at the moment he's slowly building his power up so no one can stop him and he will begin his full-scale activities when he's strong enough. Zell then praises him for that plan. Zell thinks about going back but then spots some things in the dark. The chief explains that he's a beast tamer who's controlling the bugbears. Zell remembers that the chief is Bog who was a battalion commander who tamed hundreds of bugbears to finish off thousands of humans. Bog admits that the number of his bugbears has dropped but he's working on increasing it to create the strongest army ever after which he plans to take over as the new orc king and conquer the world. Suddenly a bugbear grows which warns them that they have intruders. They put out the lights which make it very hard for Judith and her men to fight back. During the fight they struggle greatly and try to get a light going. Zell hears the commotion and thinks that if Bash was doing the fighting, then it would be louder and flashier. After the fight Judith gets captured. 
The men ask to get Judith for themselves. Bog orders for Judith to be put in the jail while the men are to be killed. <gasps> Judith also asks to be killed. Zell thinks to capitalize on the situation, and thinks that if Bash rescues her then his stomps will go up. Zell tells Bog that if he kills Judith then knights will swarm his place and ruin his plans and presents a plan to have the knights executed in the morning and make it look like it was the work of bugbears so their business doesn't get disturbed. Bog agrees with Zell's plan and orders for the men to be locked up and grabs Judith for himself. After setting up the stage, Zell thinks that if this won't work then nothing else will work and all that remains is for Bash to enter and save Judith. Outside hmm. Bash can't believe what just happened and asks what happened to the men. Houston explains that they casted a sleeping spell on them and went ahead and disobeyed his orders. Bash is shocked at humans disobeying orders. Houston explains that sometimes if they don't like orders, they disobey them. Bash asks for the consequences, and Houston explains that they include a lecture, pay cut, house arrest or stripping of ranks. Bash is surprised at it not being considered a serious crime. Houston points out that they are living in peaceful times and human beings have a lot of incompetent commanders. Bash doesn't smell blood and worries about the safety of Judith. Houston thinks that everyone who went inside must be dead by now, so the best thing would be to go back to town and form a proper attack squad together, but Bash is against that as he can't afford to lose Judith, and tells Houston that he will follow any order and fight till the end. At this Houston decides to enter the cave, rescue everyone and kill the bandits. In the past, Judith had an older sister who made her feel proud. Judith's sister was 10 years older than her, but she always had excellent grades, perfect manners and etiquette, and carried the family's expectations, and was a great role model. She became a knight after graduating school. Her talent allowed her to quickly rise to the top, and in just a few years she was entrusted with a company. Once a year, she would come back to the house to talk about the news from the warfront. She used to say that the war would be over soon and told Judith that she will help her with her studies once she gets back and will give her sword practice so she can become a knight and she may even become one of her subordinates. But if that happens, she will be strict to her. A few months later their house was enveloped in despair. The reason was that her sister had been captured by the orcs. Her parents wished for her to have died instead of being captured, but those words devastated Judith due to which she didn't talk to her parents for a while. At that time, she didn't understand what it meant for a woman to be captured by an orc. Years later when the war ended the four tribes alliance led by humans, one and all prisoners were freed. Her sister was among those who returned home but her spirit was broken. She no longer used to walk proudly but instead would always be hunched over as if hiding from some invisible enemy. She rarely spoke and would scream when any man even their own father would come close to her. Later Judith came to know that her sister became the wife of an Orsish battalion commander and was forced to give birth to six children. This broke her mind so she was unable to return to being a knight. In addition to that she couldn't marry as no man wanted a tainted woman like her. Because her sister's life was ruined, she couldn't forgive the orcs and wanted to exterminate them all. It took her some time because after the war the armed forces were downsized and the demand for knights was decreased, but she still managed to become a knight and got assigned to the fortress city of Crassel, which was led by Houston and was the closest settlement to the orc country. Houston believed that straight orcs are those orcs that committed crimes and so it would be best to get rid of them before something bad happens. After the peace treaty was signed the different races became tolerant of each other, but Judith still thought that it would be best for her to be relentless with the orcs and thought that with Houston on her side, she would be able to exterminate all orcs, but after seeing Houston's attitude change, Ever since he met an orc called Bash, she wondered where the swine slayer went. She understands that Bash is a bigwig in orc country, but still there is no need to give him that much respect just because he's an orc which caused her distrust to keep increasing. That is why she disobeyed the order to stand down as she believed that captives of war should be saved as soon as possible and even though the fairy has no connection with her the other soldiers who understood her better agreed with her and she believed that she will be forgiven for disobeying the order if the end result ends up being good, and she had no real plan and wasn't aware of the enemy's capabilities. While tied up Judith tells Bog to just kill her, but Zell kept Bog from doing that. Judith thinks that Zell was in cahoots with the orcs from the start, and thinks that the only reason they got ambushed was because Zell told Bog about their plans. Bog's men put Judith and the soldiers with her in prison. Judith questions the men's allegiance to Bog but Bog, 
points out that the war is over so if their interests align then they should get along. Judith asks the men if they were pretending to be bugbears and attacking the merchant wagons, which deeply troubles the men. Judith <gasps> didn't realize that orcs have any social skills and thought that there was no way orcs would team up with anyone and blames for Shalamis for her current predicament. The men ask Bog if he will have his way with Judith first, but he lets them have her first saying orcs should treat their underlings well. The men say that they like to suck up to Bog as he's the reason they have made it that far and begin to take off Judith's clothes while telling her to ask them to kill her instead. Judith screams for them to stop, but it has no effect on them. Suddenly, they hear a strange noise. At this moment of the men tells Bog that they are under attack by two individuals. Bog tells the men to calm down and deal with the intruders. The man says that he can't deal with them and tells Bog to get out of there quickly. Suddenly, Bash enters the scene by smashing through a wall with ease. Zelt comments that Bash arrived just in the nick of time. Bash announces to Judith that he is there to help. The bandits are confused for being attacked so suddenly, but before they can act, they are already slashed. Zell tells Houston to hurry up as it is now his time to shine since Judith is in danger. Houston plans to secure the exit and make arrangements for the reinforcements. However, Zell says that they are never going to make it in time if they do not hurry. They need to make a shortcut by breaking down a wall. On the other side, Bash stands at the entrance of the cave, announcing that he is here to help. Boggs is a bit startled to see Bash and even Bash is a bit surprised to see him here. Looks like the two of them know each other already. Bash reminds Boggs that it is forbidden for orcs to have intercourse with the women of another race without consent. Boggs tries to convince Bash that no one is forcing anyone to do anything here, but obviously Bash is not convinced. A man confirms with Boggs that Bash is not his buddy and launches an attack on him. He assumes that Bash cannot swing his huge weapon in such a tiny place. However, Bash takes out his weapon and swings it to behead the man approaching him in a single strike. The other men are surprised, but they meet the same thing shortly after by Bash's hands. Boggs knows that he is the next in line and exists the cave. Bash wants to chase him, but Zell whispers something in his ear, so he approaches Judith who has been tied up in a corner. Judith is scared as Bash approaches her and closes her eyes. However, she soon realizes that the rope on her hands has become loose and she is safe. Bash puts his cape on her shoulders and tells her that he is here to help her. He even gives her fairy dust to sprinkle it on the injured soldier. Zell tells her that it is all thanks to Bash's plan that she has been saved from becoming a bandit's plaything. Judith is surprised to hear that but still thanks them. She asks why did Bash not attack her just now. Bash does not understand her question and asks if it is okay to attack her. Of course Judith does not want that. She just knows that the orcs like to kidnap women from other races and use them for pleasure. Bash tells her that it is true but by edict of the orc king, it is forbidden for orcs to engage in non-consensual relations. Judith used to think that those were just empty words. She finally understands that this is what loyalty means. With his strength, he could have taken any woman he wanted, even Judith herself, but he restrained himself through his loyalty to the orc king and that is why Houston acknowledged him wholeheartedly. Bash stands up to head out and Judith asks where he is going. Bash tells her that he is going after Boggs. Bash was trying to faithfully carry out the orders given to him by Houston. However, Judith interpreted Bash's actions differently. Looks like she understood why Bash is going after an orc, but Bash does not understand her implications. Judith does not tell him and wishes him good fortune. Houston who has been defending the exit is in a tight spot. Boggs ordered the bugbears to attack him and take care of him quickly. However, it is not as if Boggs is not in a tight spot. He is worried that Houston is slowing him down so Bash will catch up to him. And hey. his worries does materialize as Bash approaches him from behind. Immediately, Boggs give order to all the bugbears to gather around him. He asks Bash about his purpose for coming here. Bash tells him that he was given an order in order to take care of him. Now that Boggs know, he starts speculating that only the orc king Nemesis has the power to order the orc hero. So it must be him who wants him dead. Boggs also knows the reason as to why such an order was given. It is because he did not follow the orders of removing the arms and not laying hands on the women. According to Boggs, nothing would be left of orcs without these two things. So he lashes out on Bash instead. Boggs knew he couldn't beat Bash. His instincts were screaming that he should get down on his knees and beg for his life. But Boggs has not lost his pride, 
and he has not abandoned his ideals. To him, orcs were proud, ideal warriors who do not beg for their lives even at sword point. So a fight emerges between Boggs, the former commander of the Orc Kingdom's Magical Beast Battalion, and Orc Kirobash, the former member of the Bowder's Company of the Orc Kingdom. They declared their respective oh! names, titles, and shouted at each other, while fighting to the death. That's the way the orcs have fought duels since ancient times. A duel between high-ranking orc warriors with a long and distinguished history. Even Houston, who is well-versed in the history and ecology of orcs, has never seen this before. One by one, each one of the bugbear died. Even the five trump cards that remained after the end of the war, turned into minced meat in front of Bash the hero. This lose felt hard for Boggs. He kept questioning himself as to why he did not step forward and died together with them. The truth is, he is afraid of Bash. He who believed that fighting should be his first priority and that fighting is everything, for that he even betrayed the orc king and left his country. But his feet froze when he was confronted by the hero. He is angry with himself for this, so he starts running towards Bash with all his might. The first time they encountered each other was on the battlefield, not long after my first battle, when he was so thin that he could not even wield a sword properly. Bash saw Boggs and the bud, bears, and how reassuring the tough bugbears looked running around the battlefield. And in the midst of the bugbears was Boggs wielding his mace and rampaging through, he looked like a mighty and powerful force to be reckoned with. Bash thought he would never be as strong as him for the rest of his life. That was the difference in their strength speaking. However, before he knew it, Bash had caught up with him, surpassed him, and even stopped admiring him. And so when Bash lands a final strike on Boggs, he remembers the time Boggs praised him as being the ideal embodiment of orcs. He also remembers that he was grateful to Boggs for helping him survive on the battlefield. When Boggs finally falls, Bash says in his heart that Boggs was a great warrior. He never thought Boggs would become a straight orc in a place like this. He also do not know the meaning of his last words but there was no reason to think of himself as an eyesore. Bash even respected him but now it is all over. Bash reports to Houston that he has taken care of everyone here. Judith and the others are in the back all safe but Houston's face is swollen because a bugbear clawed him. Houston is glad that everyone is safe and rubs his face to minimize the swelling. Even so Houston thought that with Bash around, he would be able to figure something out, so he prioritized on securing a way out. But after seeing all this mess, he is glad that Bash was on his side. After the fierce battle, Bash and the others walk out. He casually says that it is so bright. Houston, who is behind him, informs him that thanks to Bash, they were able to successfully solve the highway attacks. The stolen supplies were also recovered, and everyone who rushed in to fight had survived. He conveys his heartfelt gratitude towards Bash as the Knight of Commander of Crassel Fortress. Houston is still praising him but Bash's attention is behind him, towards Judith. She is standing still with a side pose, but this is enough for Bash to appreciate her beauty. She notices his stare and turns away once again. Zell whispers in Bash's ear that if he makes a move right now, she might really fall for him. After all, he saved her when she was troubled and impressed her. Zell cannot say with 100% confidence, but this might be his chance. She can tell so by Judith's fingers which do not hold a ring right now. So Bash approaches her and calls out to her. She looks a bit troubled but still listens to him. Bash politely asks if she would bear his children. Judith looks at him sharply at first but then smiles and says that she would not be so easily misunderstanding him anymore because he believes in the orders of consent before action from the Orc King. Hmm. Bash does not understand if this is a yes or a no and seeks Zell's help. Zell holds a match of yes and no in her mind and comes to a conclusion that it is a roundabout way of saying that he was rejected. Bash does not know what to do next. Zell tells him that when you get rejected, it is best to just grace, fully accept it, and move on to the next woman. Being too persistent or pressuring someone can lead to non-consensual deed, so it is important to avoid that. Bash understands that easily because he knows that in combat, no matter how hard one tries, if it is their fate to lose, they will lose. Getting discouraged and losing focus on the battlefield will only lower your chance of survival every time. To be a warrior means to quickly switch gears, gather oneself, and head towards the next battle. However, he finds it a pity because he liked her very much. After hearing that, Judith say that even though he is an orc, he is quite a smooth talker. She asks him what does he like so much about a woman who belittles and mocks him. 
and then ends up being captured by the enemy, crying pathetically, and then having to be saved by him. Bash's answer is simple, he likes her face. Judith is surprised to hear that and decides to take it as a compliment while blushing a little. Anyways, she appreciates his help. If it was not for him, she would have ended up like her older sister. Bash did not know that she had an older sister. Judith tells him that she has an older sister who was captured by the orcs and was repeatedly assaulted until she was completely broken. Bash thinks that if she is Judith's older sister, then she must have been an equally beautiful female knight. He remembers a female knight saying that intercourse without consent greatly hurts the pride of female warriors of other races. Orcs claim to be proud warriors, then they should kill those who seek death and let them die with honor. When the terms of the peace treaty was concluded, it included a ban on assault. A female knight of the human delegation, known as the Bloodstained Lily, stood up and spoke. Her words finally made the orcs understand a bit, although they were reluctant to accept it. Until that time, no one batted an eye because for orcs, that is what it meant to take a woman prisoner. Judith continues and says that she has always hated orcs. The orcs were the ones who had reduced her older sister, who was once a dignified, intelligent, and admirable role model, into such a miserable state. But she has decided to change her mindset because she has come to realize that there are good orcs, like Bash. Zell evaluates the situation and tells Bash that this is not going to work for him. However, Bash thinks that he might have a chance since the atmosphere is good. Zell tells hmm. him that in terms of species, this woman e being with an orc is impossible. Even he himself as a man would have some species that he would never mate with. And Zell is absolutely right. Bash would certainly never want to mate with the lizardmen and killer bees who are just not suitable for mating. The killer bees only give birth to killer bees. If a killer bee gets pregnant, she will kill and devour her mate, and it is hard to distinguish a male from a female. So if Judith thinks of orcs like that, then it certainly is impossible. Zell explains that marrying her might be impossible, but since Bash is a respectable person and human females tend to talk a lot among themselves, there is a good chance that she could introduce him to another human woman who would be okay with an orc like him. But she warns him that he must not bluntly ask her to be introduced since human females really dislike the idea of switching partners. Bash asks her what would be the best way to put it. Zell suggests to say that he wishes to form a special connection with someone might be a good way. Bash appreciates that Zell is with him since he would never be able to come up with a clever solution like that. Bash asks Judith for a favor. He is seeking encounters like the one they had and asks if she has any idea about it. Judith thinks of an image of Bog in her mind and Luz at Houston. He understands the assignment and tells Bash that he might have some leads regarding this matter. After all, he is the captain of Classel Knights so he gathers such information. Bash is impressed that such is to be expected from a man of his rank. Kind, strong and commanding, yet he knows so much about the female knight who is his subordinate. Houston tells him to visit the town in the Shawanashi Forest in the Elf Country. There, he might find the encounter he seek. Bash thought he would introduce him to one of the female knights, but an elf is not bad at all. Though the elves might bear fewer offspring than humans, it is said they share a favorable bond with orcs, leading to successful unions. Such offspring are often blessed with potent arcane gifts. Elves with their long lifespans possess sturdy constitutions and are frequently graced with lovely features making them highly esteemed amongst his kin. However, their often delicate stature leads some orcs to view them with a bit of disdain. As of now, elves are not found in the Orsish breeding grounds, giving them a certain mystique. If you were to take one as a bride and bring her home, it would surely uphold his image as a hero. Even Zell thinks that it is not a bad idea. So Bash decides to head there at once, making Houston all confused. Houston did not know that he would leave so soon and wants to host him for the night. However, Bash says that he does not have the time for such things. Houston had hoped that they could share a drink and celebrate in the tavern tonight. However, Bash says that it is too early to hold a celebration. Houston understands and decides not to bother him anymore. Judith calls Bash from behind and wishes him good fortune in battle. Bash leaves but the knights that have been saved still do not know the reason for Bash's visit. Houston looks at Judith so she starts explaining. The thing is, after the war, the orc king chose to ally with the other races rather than fight. Houston also attended the ceremony. Among the orcs at the ceremony, there were some who looked displeased. These were those who opposed peace with the humans. Orcs are naturally war-loving. 
They have sought warfare since birth. Some thought, why peace? I want to fight more. Many of these individuals split from the Orc Nation and they eventually formed vast groups. Now, they are dispersed throughout the world. And they persistently cause chaos worldwide, much like the recent incident. Judah thinks that Bash is seeking out these disgraceful orcs to eradicate them, to reclaim the pride of his race. She has come to see orcs in a different light after this incident. She despises orcs. It was orcs who harm her sister. They are a race that doesn't treat humans, especially women, as equals, often viewing them merely as tools for bearing children. There is no way she could ever like them. <laughs> Yet, even within such a despised race, she realized that there are individuals worthy of respect. Some could even be seen as role models for knights like her. There is some profound significance in that realization. A knight asks if Houston knew all this from the start. Houston confirms and says that the knights should aspire to be like him. The knights also agree with him and hope to strive to be like Bash in the future. But before that, Houston is going to send them on probation and cut their pays in half. He will spare them from being stripped of their knighthood because of Bash. He tells them to reflect on their actions and the knights follow. Bash and Zell finally arrive at the Shiwanashi Forest. This place brings nostalgia to the both of them. Roaming around, Zell points out a space where Bash hid when he was wounded. He also remembers the place because if Zell did not come to help him at that time, he would have died. However, according to Zell, nothing would have happened even if she was not there. After walking a bit more, they arrive at the Amet River. Bash proceeds to cross the river, but Zell has her concerns. If he tries to enter a country other than the legitimate checkpoint, they would be displeased with him. Looks like Bash had no idea about it whatsoever and seeks Zell's help in this regard. She tells him that there is a bridge up ahead at the border that they can use to pass through. Bash obviously listens to her so they start heading toward the bridge. On the way, they notice that the place has changed a lot since the war. However, Bash corrects his misinterpretation and says that it has gone back to the way it was before the war. Zell calls him poetic for saying that but also agrees with him. This is how forests are meant to be. Lush and vibrant foliage, the clear burbling of rivers and streams, beautiful field of flowers and the cheerful sun. Zell likes flying around in a forest like this. Bash teases her that she can talk like a normal fairy after all. However, Zell does not like this comment and tries her hardest to explain that she is in fact a normal fairy even though she got bored of living like a normal fairy. While she is still ranting, Bash notices someone on the other side of the river. Upon closer look, he finds that it is a zombie. The zombie also notices them and dives and swims in order to reach to them. Zell and Bash do not look too bothered by the zombie and decide to go away. They reach the checkpoint at Elman Bridge but are stopped by the guards hey. because Bash is an orc and is entering an elven country. Bash tells them straightforwardly that he is traveling to search for a certain thing. The human general Houston suggested that he might find what he is searching for in this kingdom. That is why he has come. The guards a bit surprised to find that the general sent him and talk among themselves if they should really believe his words. This is where Zell comes in and gives a long speech saying to open the gates because her master is a hero and has been granted special permission. However, the guards are even more confused and think that this matter is highly suspicious. The guards finally decide to not let him pass through but then carriage stops near the entrance and the one sitting inside tells them to clear the way. Bash explains that he is only trying to enter the city but has been stopped. Hey. The man notices that he is an orc and tells the guards to explain the situation. The guards tell him everything and as expected, the incoming elf is also suspicious and asks if Bash can swear on this matter. Bash swears in the name of the great orc king Nemesis. The elf can tell from the way of his speech that Bash is someone of high rank in his country but is still contemplating whether to let him pass or not. Just then, a voice is heard from within the carriage to let Bash pass through because the war has already ended and the orcs are keeping their promise. It is true that there are some stray orcs but if a traveler has permit then it is okay to let him pass. Bash finds the voice clear and beautiful. The elf driving the carriage respectfully speaks to the lady called Sonia and says that he's never heard of orcs traveling. Sonia says that the war has been ended for three years and if Nemesis allowed it, it should be fine. The driver elf still says that they do not have the evidence. Sonia gets a bit irritated and asks if he does not know what it means for an orc to swear on the name of their king. Of course, the driver elf knows about it but he has his doubts about stray orcs not following the order of the king 
and even Bash to be spouting nonsense. However, Sonia explains that if he were astray, he could have crossed the river to enter the kingdom instead of coming through the checkpoint and bothering with the kind request by Tang names of Houston and the Orc King Nemesis. He could have named someone of authority instead of taking the name of Houston, the pig killer. The driver elf is finally convinced and tells the guards to open the gate. The carriage also starts moving and Bash thanks Sonia. She days it was no trouble since now is the times of peace. Sonia is excitedly explaining some facts and take her head out from the window. However, she is shocked to see Bash and hits her head, falling unconscious. Bash finds her really beautiful and thinks that Houston was right to say that he could find her goddess I this country. Bash proceeds to enter the city while Zell is thinking that she has seen Sonia somewhere. The elven city mm. is quite the flower garden. It seems like the elves are more focused on fashion now that the war is over. Bash explains that it is due to the fact that they do not have to hide anymore. This was all there even during the war just beneath the camouflage. They also notice that there are a lot of people from other races as well. However, something is definitely strange, even Zell says that she thought of elves to be more exclusive and stand offish, but things are not looking like they expected. Bash heard that until the last 10 years or so, the elves wouldn't even allow soldiers of other races to rest in their town, even if they were allies. Zell thinks that there might be a festival going on, hence the change. Bash notices many elven females along with the males of other races. However, he can also sense eyes filled with grudges and hate. He is sure because he has witnessed this many times during the war. But he cannot understand this kind of atmosphere in such a peaceful town. Going further, Bash notices three elven women trying to woo a single human man. Each of them describe their perks and try to convince the man that they are wife material. The human male is unable to decide, but Bash on the other hand is really jealous. The elven women notice Bash looking at them and snap at him, saying that an orc looking at them would give them cancer. They even question his presence in the city and doubt that he is a stray. But they are unable to distinguish just by looking at him but can still guess that he is someone well known. Bash explains that he just found it strange for three elven women to compete for a human man. The elven women get angry and snap at him once more but with greater magnitude. They are quite offended for being see like some greedy hyenas clinging to each other and ready to pounce. Bash calmly explains that it was not his intention to pick a fight since he has many better ways to do so. The elven women are not convinced so easily so Bash has to apologize while saying that he has been new to his country and there are many things that he does not understand. The elven women do not know how to reply to such a sincere apology and lets him off finally. Bash simply walks away, but the human man who saw how fierce these women can get wants to walk away as well. However, the elven women do not let him off easily and tries to convince him that they were only trying to protect him from the orc. Upon reflection, Bash knows that it is not a good place to pick a fight, but he hoped to listen to the beautiful voices of the elves and understand the situation better. There is something he still does not get it. All over the town, men of different races are being swarmed by elven women. And on closer look, many of these men seem to be former soldiers as well. He wonders if this is some kind of festival specifically for the army. He is still thinking over this matter when Zell comes flying and sticks to his face in a frenzy. According to her, there is a problem. Bash removes her from his face by grabbing her from her wings and asks what the problem is. Her eyes turn black as she says that she just found a terrible truth. For the ever laid back, ever. Carefree Zell to be this distressed is very rare. Whenever Zell panicked like this, it was always because she discovered something important. It was at times like these that she told about when the orc clan chief Balaban died, when the demon king Gedegius was slain, when the killer bee queen, who incited rebellion, was eaten by her daughter, and there are many more. All of these were shocking and disheartening news, so Bash grabs her and inquires about the matter all seriously. Zell starts telling and Bash is ready to hear the worst of the news. He is determined to face any problem head-on like a proud orc. However, contrary to his expectations, Zell tells him that right now in Elven Kingdom, there is a huge boom in the marriages between different races. For Bash, it was an incredibly great news. 